Hello everyone, my name's David. Today I'll be sharing with you my capstone project. It's called Generating Music Through Machine Learning and Algorithms. I love playing pop songs on the piano, but slowly I discovered that they share some characteristics, such as having a clear chord progression or having repetition. It's as if there is a common algorithm behind all of these melodies. Hence, I decided to explore ways in which we could recreate pop song melodies either through machine learning or hard-coded algorithms. Let's take a look at our first approach. I found a library called Google Magenta. Within that library, I found two models, Lookback and Attention RNN. According to Magenta, they are capable of generating long-term structures. Hence, I decided to train these models using my own MIDI files. The MIDI files I used for training included an entire video game music dataset as well as 50 pop song vocal lines that I manually extracted. So in the end, I experimented with two models and three sets of weights. How did these models perform? I found that they shared a pattern. The model would take an input melody and slowly modify it over time. However, it would never return to the original input melody. Let's take a look at this example. The first bar is actually the input melody. We see that the model first repeats the input, then it creates modified versions of the input. At the very end, we get a heavily modified version of the input melody. However, uh, except for the second bar, the model never repeats its input melody ever again. It's a huge problem that Magenta's models couldn't repeat melodies. After investigating the source code, I discovered a structural issue. Each time the model outputs a note, it looks back only on the notes 1 and 2 bars before itself to make the final decision. This makes the model incapable of repeating melodies it generated more than 2 bars ago. With that, we can say that Magenta may not be the ideal pop song generator. Although Magenta's models couldn't repeat melodies, they did produce logical continuations. So, we can say that Magenta's models are better suited for brainstorming and generating experimental music. In the following demonstration, we will use two input melodies to display some characteristics of Magenta's output. Let's begin with input 1. It's just the first four notes of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. As for input 2, it is the first two bars of Maroon 5's payphone. Let's begin our first comparison. We notice that the complexity of the input melody, such as its pitch range and variation in note length, would be reflected in its continuation. Let's start by listening to input 1's continuation. The model has to build a melody around the two pitches from input 1. So you might notice that the output melody just jumps around C, E, and G. It felt quite constrained. Now let's listen to a continuation of input 2. This time, the model can build a melody around a wider pitch range, so the output sounds less constricted. Also, notice how the dotted quarter note from the input melody is actually carried over to the output melody. From this example, we know that the input melody does play a part in affecting the output. Let's move on to comparison 2. In this comparison, you would notice that attention RNN seems to hold longer themes than lookback RNN does. 
let's listen to look back on its output. Notice how for every two bars, the rhythm changes. Now, let's play attention ordinance output. Remember what the first bar sounds like. Attention ordinance is able to hold the same rhythm across 11 bars. Finally, we arrive at comparison 3. Magenta's output would take on characteristics of its training MIDI files. For example, we would see rapid 16th notes if the model was trained using video game music. 16th notes aren't that common in pop music. However, they do appear in video game music a lot, stirring intense battle themes. Let's listen to an example from a model trained using video game music. As you have heard, 16th notes did appear in the melody. Now, let's listen to a counterexample where the model was trained using pop song vocal lines. And as you have heard, these 16th notes didn't appear in this example. This shows us that the training MIDI files do affect the final output of the model. Let's move on to our next method. Remember how I saw a set of rules for generating pop songs? I experimented with converting these rules into a hard-coded algorithm in Python. Let me explain some of my functions. Since I define pop songs as having clear chord progressions, I had to fit each bar to a chord. Here's how it's done. First, I generate a random rhythm. Then, I decide on which chord to use, with its chord tones all laid out. Next, I would assign some notes in this rhythm with the chord tones. As for the other notes, I'll just assign them with neighboring tones. In the end, this entire bar would sound like that chord. Repetition can also be achieved through hard coding. All I have to do is to generate a four-bar sequence duplicate that sequence, and then refit parts of the sequence with the original chords. That way, the second sequence will sound quite similar while not being completely identical to the first one. I wrote functions that help me generate rhythms, fit chords to these rhythms, as well as duplicating and modifying them. Here's a screenshot of my code, where I created an 8-bar melody fitted to the chord progression of C, F, G, C. It still sounded unnatural when compared to real pop songs, but at least it was able to follow a chord progression and have repetition. I've put 10 of my algorithms output on Google Drive for you to listen to. Let's talk about the lessons I learned. First, never underestimate the time you need to pre-process your data. Due to Magenta's configurations and the large size of my dataset, it was tough for me to manually extract all the tracks I wanted. It became my biggest challenge, as I had to waste an entire afternoon just to extract 50 of them. The second lesson I learned was that both machine learning and hard-coded algorithms may not produce full-length pop songs on its own. 
each approach has its own strengths and weaknesses. How could I continue this project in the future? First, I should write Python scripts that help me pre-process my raw data files. That way, I don't need to spend countless hours just manually extracting my tracks. Second, I should try integrating Magenta's models with my algorithm. That way, I could generate melodies with both the logical continuations from Magenta's side and the repetitions from my side. Finally, I will share my algorithm on GitHub to help those who are interested in continuing my project. Let me play two sample audio clips for you. Let's start with Magenta's output. As you have heard, each bar of Magenta's output reflects some properties of its previous bars. That creates consistency within the piece. Now, let's listen to my algorithm's output. As you have heard, this output does follow a chord progression, and it also has repetition. With that, it marks the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.